For we have seen his star in the east and are come to adore him. Words taken from today's Holy Gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I think that many of us are familiar with that special visitor's attraction known as the Ark Encounter in Williamstown, Kentucky. The Ark Encounter is an exact reproduction of Noah's Ark built according to biblical specifications, spanning 510 feet long, 85 feet wide, and yes, 51 feet high. This modern engineering marble amazes visitors. It's obvious from the size of the vessel that Noah would have needed many years and yes, many helpers to build such a gigantic structure. Noah's construction project would have been the talk of the town and more than a few of his neighbors would have helped build the structure. They would have brought lumber, they would have brought supplies to that building site, many people involved. Countless people would have seen the structure and would have noted that this incredible sight of seeing various beasts of every species entering the ark two by two. People would have heard about the threat of the worldwide flood coming upon the earth for Noah, as the inerrant scriptures tell us, was, quote, a preacher of righteousness, unquote. And yet, when those flood waters came, the people were taken by surprise, the Bible tells us. And the very men that had helped build the ark, the very men that had brought supplies for the project, found themselves drowned in the waters. Only Noah and his family, eight in all, were saved while all others perished. So many saw the sign, yet they did not come on board. They were provided with time and much grace, an opportunity to repent, yet they did not cooperate, they did not respond. But today we celebrate the epiphany of our dearest Lord and Savior. In a sense, it is a special Christmas day for the Gentiles, as December 25th was the special day for the Jews who saw the birth of their Messiah. Today, the three kings came from the east, representing the nations, the Gentiles, the pagans, and they come to adore Christ the infant king. These three royal men are most admirable in that they saw the star, the sign, and they came to adore. They received an extraordinary grace, and they cooperated with it. They followed the light of divine grace promptly and perseveringly until they arrived at the manger. The great church father and doctor of grace, St. Augustine, refer to this moment as the tempus stelae, the time of the star, a special hour of grace given to men, inviting them to respond. The Holy Gospel of St. Matthew is very clear regarding the three kings. Vidimus, we have seen the star, they said. The time of the star, they saw it. That time of the star has been provided for us as well. And Venimus, the Bible says, and we are come. The kings came. We have come all of this way to adore the newborn king of the Jews. We have responded to grace promptly, and we have persevered through a long journey with many challenges and disappointments. The tempo stelle, the time of the star, for the kings happened immediately at the moment of the virgin birth of the Savior. The miraculous star was created solely, that star was created solely for the moment to announce the newborn king of the Jews. The star of Bethlehem shone with a most brilliant light, a star of wonder, a star with royal beauty bright. It shone out towards the nations, towards the Gentiles, but not towards the Jews. The Jews had the Old Testament. They had angels, they had the prophets to guide them to the truth, while the pagans looked to the night skies for answers. And at midnight on December 25th, the extraordinary star appeared in the night sky. And many saw that star, many noted its unique beauty, its extraordinary characteristics, 
And yes, it's incredible brightness. Everybody noticed it. Some may have even recalled various prophecies from their own pagan oracles, which spoke of a great king that would arise from amongst the Jews. The pagans believed it. Some perhaps would have seen the star and would have recalled to mind various things spoken by Jews that were in exile that spoke out about a star shall arise out of Jacob and a scepter shall spring up from Israel, as the book of Numbers records. But though many people saw the star, lots of people saw the star, only three wise men followed the star towards Bethlehem. Vidimus et venimus. We saw the star, and we are come to adore the Lord. Traditionally, the three wise men, the three kings, would have come from different places, different kingdoms, and they would have met each other along the way to the Holy Land. That means that all three of them had started off all on their own on that long journey. They didn't have their wives with them, didn't have their sort of relatives with them, maybe some servants at the most. Each would have had to leave his family, leave his friends, as well as his creature comforts. They were kings. Perhaps some of them would have had even people questioning their sanity for making such a long trip because of a star. But each of these kings ignored the objections from others. They obeyed the call of God. They follow the light of his grace. They cooperate with the tempus stele, the time of the star. And when the three men met up with each other, their faith would have been strengthened as they now traveled together, offering mutual encouragement. And yet as they near Jerusalem, the Bible says, all of a sudden the star disappears, goes away. Their guiding light is gone. For that miraculous star will not shine over that city, which will crucify its Messiah. Nonetheless, the three kings venture into the holy city to visit cruel King Herod. And they note that both Herod and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem are troubled, the Bible says, with the presence of these foreigners announcing, we have seen his star in the east and we are come to adore him. Jerusalem is troubled at that report. But the three kings are undaunted in their pursuit. And having been told by the Jewish scribes that out of Bethlehem shall come forth the king of the Jews, they begin their journey again. And at this moment, the miraculous star all of a sudden reappears and causes the kings to rejoice with exceedingly great joy, the Bible records. Their response to the tempostele the time of the star is then rewarded as they see the royal infant God and his mother and the wise men fall prostrate, offering the divine child gifts of gold for a king, frankincense for a God, and myrrh for one who would die for the sins of men. They had left their homelands quickly, promptly. As soon as the star appeared, they packed up and they prepared for the journey. But if they had delayed for just a few weeks, maybe even just a few days, they might have missed the divine child. And these men were not only prompt, but also filled with perseverance. Therefore, they are excellent examples for us in the spiritual life. With the wise men, we may say, Vidi Mostella, we saw the star. But who of us will dare say, venimus, and we are come, we respond. When moved by the sweet influence of faith in our prayers, we are perhaps inspired to make good resolutions, to change our ways, to amend our life. We see clearly what needs to be done. We got our issues. And yet we hesitate, we delay or we fail to put forth good resolutions, or we fail to persevere in the resolutions we have made. We have seen the emptiness of created things, but our hearts are not completely detached from such things. All of us, every one of us here, is given our own tempus stele, 
the time of the star, a moment of grace that we must respond to. It is a grace that may never again come our way. It is a grace that could either lead us to growth and perfection or even our very salvation if it is followed promptly and with perseverance. But if such a grace is not cooperated with, if such a grace is rejected, if the star is not followed in our life, it could literally mean our damnation. It would make us like those men who built the ark of Noah but never got into it. It would make us like those Gentiles who saw the star, like the kings did, but they never came to adore. It could make us like the citizens of Jerusalem who were just six miles from Bethlehem, yet they refused to visit the newborn king. Let us then take the three kings, the three wise men for our great example, and respond promptly and perseveringly to our own time of the star. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.